Hello, this is Nate Lombardi. Can you please tell us your name and your profession? Oh my goodness, Carl Potts, and um, I'm a visual storyteller working mostly in comics, but also writing uh, screenplays. Fantastic. Carl, who is your favorite superhero and why? I guess it would have to be Spider-Man because when I first discovered Marvel Comics, Spider-Man was being plotted and drawn by Steve Ditko, who ended up being my first major creative influence. And it featured a character who was young and still in school and had a great costume and included a full face mask, which was rare. So in theory, you could imagine anybody, including yourself, being in that costume. You didn't have to have this giant square jaw like Captain America, you know, showing through there. But the fact that, uh, you know, he had the, you know, the everyday problems of a, of a kind of nerdish school, high school student, everybody aspires to be the age or, you know, bracket one or two above them. And at that time, I was probably still the tail end of elementary school before going into middle school. And so aspiring to be a high school student made sense. And he, he's your very, he's your favorite to this very day or just because there's a the nostalgia that really. I think so. I also like the fact that, you know, that's where Stan kind of coined the with great power comes great responsibility thing. And that always echoed with me the fact that he was always trying to do good and often that was misinterpreted either by accident or on purpose particularly by the daily bugle and that he had to deal with that that his good deeds were unappreciated uh, but he did them anyway great uh, i think these are all kind of like uh, without knowing it at the time these were life lessons absolutely okay great okay if you could have one superhero power what would it be I don't know. I've thought about this before. And, you know, a lot of people, it's usually to fly or, or, or something like that. I would love to fly, but I'm not sure if I'd be able to have the courage to exploit it to its full extent. I'm not sure if I'd go as high as I could possibly go to find out where that limit was or do something cool. stupid like, you know, I can fly up there, but then I suddenly find there's not enough oxygen to breathe and I pass out and crash to the ground kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> Spoken like a true editor, Carl. <laughs> but I have, I've always been a, an amateur aquatic and marine biologist. And so the idea of um, being able to be at home and comfortable for long periods of time underwater uh, is another thing that really appeals to me. You know, having great strength and all that is, is cool. But I'm not, I I kind of like the idea of, of um, being able to explore nature with out my normal human limitations. Great. Okay, what is your everyday superhero power now? Oh, I wish I had one. It's to turn my hair gray. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have the power to go in the opposite direction. <laughs> You're highly creative, Carl. I mean, come on, what you come up with on the spot, crazy. My, my superhero power now? I think like a lot of you know teachers, you have an ability that's hopefully better than most people's to um, look at the work of other people and, and try and spot areas that could be helped and not only spot them, but hopefully uh, more often than not come up with ways to make them stronger, make them better. Like a lot of teachers though, I'm much better at spotting those things in other people's work than my own. So that's why I, I often try and make sure I get people whose uh, opinions I respect to look at my work. When I was um, first starting to, to write and do the layouts for Punisher War Journal, uh, the book was assigned to the only editor on the Marvel staff that had room on his schedule for it. And there was a reason why that person had a light schedule. He was not a very good editor. And initially, he gave me no feedback on the series. And later on, he decided to try and earn his living. So he started creating feedback that was not needed. You know, it was at best, it was six of one, half a dozen, the other type suggestions. And at worst, it was detrimental. Uh, so early on, I, I really wanted a real story editor. So what a lot of people don't know is I would give my plots to Ralph Macchio, who wasn't my editor, but it was a great story man. And he would give me feedback. And he would give me the grief I needed to make me change or defend things that I was not getting it from the other editor. That's great. It's a great story. That's so, yeah, I, I, I like getting 
quality feedback from quality editorial people. Okay, who would who would win in a battle in one or two sentences, Marvel or DC, if they battled? If it just came down to physical might and all that, it, it might be DC, but I think the Marvel heroes would find a way to leverage their abilities and knowledge together to, to, to win. Great answer. Okay. In about one or two sentences, what is your passion? You talked about water, uh, underwater, um, enhancing people and magnifying people's talent. Is there any other passion that you can think of? Well, I just uh, telling stories visually is just, it's always been a passion for me. And I think it would have to be for anybody who's interested in comics or film or animation. There's something about telling stories visually that's always appealed to me when I was you know still in grade school and I would mow the lawn in the Saturday mornings first Saturday mornings I get first I watch Saturday morning cartoons and then I go out and mow the lawn and I take the money I got from mowing the lawn to go down to the variety store and buy comic books so the whole day was spent nothing but visual storytelling in one form or another and that's what prompted me to mow the lawn that's great. Do you have any everyday, besides your parents, any everyday superheroes uh, that you might consider that you really admire? Well, there are, there are people that I, I got to work with over the years that were really went out of their ways to be helpful for no personal gain of their own. Okay, I may have mentioned to you before this, the story of how Jim Starlin went out of his way to help me when I was trying to break into comics or... Um, I showed him my work at conventions, and um, he and uh, another artist, Alan Weiss, would agree agreed that whenever I came up with a new batch of um, samples, that they'd be happy to look at them. So I'd meet them, they'd give me feedback, and then eventually they needed to produce a, a whole issue of a comic over a four-day weekend. So they asked me to help them do that, which was my first uncredited professional work. And then when I moved to New York to try and break in, Starlin arranged for me to crash with Al Milgram and Walt Simonson and living in the same building where Bernie Wrightson and Howard Chaikin. And then Starlin came to New York uh, a day or so after that and took me up to the Marvel offices, introduced me around and helped line up my initial work there. And um, in fact, years later, I found out that one of the editors up there that gave me work only did that because he took taken Starlin aside and said, I'll give this kid some work if you do a cover for me. And I had to hear that from somebody else, not from Starlin. He never told me. Oh. So uh, he'd be one of the heroes, yeah. That's beautiful. Okay, this is a speed round. So one or two word answers. Okay, speed round. Batman or Iron Man? Iron Man, because I, I think even though Bruce Wayne got his start from a traumatic childhood event, Iron Man had to overcome his own personal demons to, to be a hero. Cool. Sweet or salty? Well, one of the things that I like to eat far too much are um, these Asian snacks, which go by the, the overall name of crack seed. They're preserved plums of various types. And they mix both sweet and salt in there. So. Great. Would you choose Cyclops or Wolverine? Uh, I guess... Wolverine, because if he wants to, he can appear normal, but Cyclops can never get his glasses knocked off. Never have heard that them, answer. Have them crazy glued to his head. That's good. Introvert or extrovert? I'm a definitely introvert, but I've been put in situations where I have to get over that at times. Um, when I was at Marvel, we would often go to conventions and um, we'd be put in situations where we have to interact with the fans and go on stage and talk and all that. And initially it was very traumatic. Mark Grunewald, who was sort of the heart and soul of Marvel's editorial staff at the time, who was also, most people would be surprised to hear it, was also an introvert, but he forced himself to be an extrovert. And he was just so enthusiastic about everything he did that he, he forced himself to be an extrovert. And he, he would create these events at conventions for the editorial staff to take in, uh, to take part in where there were contests against the fans doing different physical things for the fans to, to win prizes of comics. And I was mortified, but it was his, his sheer enthusiasm 
for what he was doing that made those of us that were introverts, um, you know, willing to participate. And we, despite ourselves, we would have fun. That's great. Okay. Wonder Woman or Captain Marvel? If it's Gail Godot, there's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> She's the favorite. Yeah. Um, okay. Beach, mountains, or forest? One word. Beach. Okay. Now, I, all, I usually ask favorite illustrator or writer, but because this is your jam, you're allowed to choose three. Well, my first big influence was Ditko, so he's got to be in there. When it comes to thinking in a whole nother way of drawing than I think, and the person just being amazing, it would have been Jorge Zavino, who unfortunately passed away uh, in his 40s. He drew the first Punisher graphic novel for me, and he also drew another one down you know, and did, um, a series for another publisher called Winter World, and they did a book called Seven Block for Me at Epic. The guy was just phenomenal. And like I said, just thought in a whole different way of drawing than I did. Another guy who whose art style I didn't actually like the rendering style of, but his power, the dynamics, and the visual storytelling uh, were groundbreaking would be Jack Kirby. I, when looking at his work when I was a kid, it, it always looked ugly, but I was always drawn back to it. I just kept going back and going back, and I didn't realize so I was older. What it was was the the visual storytelling and the dynamics were just awesome. So, uh, I'd have Okay, to last question. Who are the some students that you're really proud that, that you've amplified in your career? Because they're as great as they are because of guidance like, like you. Um, I don't know about the guidance, but finding them and giving them opportunities. So people I, I mentored as opposed to being a, a formal student were would be uh, Jim Lee and Wells Protasio. Scott Williams, Larry Stroman, John Bogdanov, Gene Brigman, Terry, Sh Terry Shoemaker, Art Adams, Mike Mignola, to name a few. Any in the last, I don't know, I mean, because I'm still learning, are there any in the last five years that you've met that you're like, Check, keep an eye on these people? Well, I've got some students that I think are on the cusp of uh, breaking a big, um, and uh, one is Brett Ryan's and young woman named Erin Candrelli. She has a different pen name though. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. And then um, there's always like uh, every year at, at SVA, there's always a, a few that seem to rise above the rest and uh, we'll see what happens with them. That's it, that's the whole interview. That was really fun. Thanks so much, Carl. Okay, excellent.